Hello everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video for gold for the trading week ending Friday 8th of January 2021. This week started with some upward movement but we didn't see a new swing high, that's really important. It ended with some very strong downward movement which would tend to support the first Elliott wave count which is bearish but we don't have a new swing low and so both wave counts remain valid, we still have to be open minded and objective and consider both bullish and bearish possibilities and when we get to classic technical analysis at the end of this I'll show you why. My first Elliott wave count is very bearish, it expects a bear market is still in its relatively early stages, the final target remains at 657. My second Elliott wave count also remains valid, it is very bullish. It has a new mid-term target at 2141 and a final target which may be revised at 2182. If it's revised it'll be revised upward. First Elliott wave count, bearish. This wave count considers an expanded flat correction on a monthly chart. They're actually pretty common structures. They have B waves which move beyond the start of the A wave, convincing us that there has been a trend change and price should continue in that direction right before a C wave continues to make new price extremes beyond the end of the A wave. In classic technical terms they are huge sideways, well this one is huge, a huge sideways consolidation in an ever expanding range with A, B moving beyond the start of A and C moving beyond the end of what A. This wave count considers B should be over here and C should have begun, the target is for C to reach 1.618 the length of A at 657. C should subdivide as a 5 wave structure. This wave count sees super cycle B subdividing as a double zigzag W, X, Y. Within X the important difference between the two wave counts is in here. This wave count sees a triangle in this position, this has a perfect fit at all time frames. Let's take a look at the daily chart where this high here for super cycle B is this point back here. While price remains below this invalidation point this wave count will remain valid. And now while price remains below this short term invalidation point for the short term this wave count will remain valid and entirely possible. We have to be open minded and consider both bullish and bearish possibilities at this time. If there's been a huge trend change at super cycle degree then super cycle C should begin with cycle wave 1 unfolding lower, it looks like it should be unfolding as an impulse, within it primary 1 would most likely unfold as an impulse and may have begun with a series of 1, 2, 3, 4 overlapping first and second waves. It's actually pretty common for gold in its early stages of new trends for these second wave corrections to sometimes be longer lasting than the first second wave correction within the new trend and it forms a curved look to its impulses. It doesn't reduce the probability of the wave count for this particular market that minuet wave 2 is longer lasting than intermediate wave 2. This is starting with deep and time consuming second wave corrections which is really normal for this market. The target for minute 3 remains the same for it to reach 2.618 the length of minute 1 at 1645. Within minuet 3 which may have begun at this week's high no second wave correction may move beyond its start. At the hourly chart level here's minuet wave 2 and minuet wave 3 may have begun here with a strong downward movement for sub minuet 1 which has a pretty typical curved look to it, a strong start and then this curved movement here, that's a fairly normal look for gold's impulses. We may see a relatively brief shallow correction for sub minuet wave 2, the downward pull of a wave at of a third wave at multiple degrees may force the second wave now to be more shallow than it may otherwise be and so the 0 0.382 Fibonacci ratio is a preferred target for it. At the weekly chart level this wave count is bullish which I think at this time most people are most comfortable with. If we want to see a bullish Elliott wave count we just move the degree of labelling within that bear market up one degree to see grand super cycle 4 over here, it fits nicely as a double zigzag 
and a super cycle wave one beginning here with cycle one complete, cycle two complete, cycle three complete, cycle four possibly complete here as a double zigzag. We have to allow the possibility though that cycle four could move a bit lower as a triple zigzag. They're reasonably rare Elliott wave structures but not too rare. It's entirely possible it could do that and if it did it would actually then have better proportion to cycle wave two which subdivides as a double flat. Cycle four could also continue sideways as a flat correction labelled A, B, C. We could see B move beyond the start of A and then C move beyond the end of A. So I'm going to have to leave the invalidation point down here. If cycle four does continue, it may not move into cycle wave one price territory. When we get to the daily chart, actually no, there isn't one on the daily chart. There is one in here on the weekly chart, but I'm not labeling it as an expanded flat here. If we just quickly jump back to the first weekly chart, I want to show you what an expanded flat would look like. A, B, C. This movement fits really nicely as an expanded flat at all time frames. It has B which moves beyond the start of A and C which moves beyond the end of A. It's a sideways consolidation in an ever expanding range with overshoots of resistance and support before it's over. Coming back to the second bullish weekly chart, I'm trying to explain that cycle 4 could do that. We could label it A, B, C. It could continue sideways to have better proportion to cycle 2. If we see a new all-time high for gold, then I will have to consider that possibility very carefully. And we should know if it's a B wave because it should have weakness. That's the identifying feature of B waves. If we see upward movement to new all-time highs, which lacks support from volume, has weak range, has divergence between price and RSI at those highs, then we have to consider it could be a B wave. For now, let's consider cycle four may be over and cycle five and the bull market for gold may have resumed down here. The target is for cycle five to reach 1.618 the length of cycle one. If it reaches this target and either the structure is incomplete or price just keeps on rising through that target, then I would use the next Fibonacci ratio in the sequence, 2.618, and then I would calculate a higher target for you. That's my approach to target calculation. Let's take a look at the end of cycle four on the daily chart where this high here for cycle three is this point here. It subdivides nicely as a double zigzag, W, X, Y. It could be over here. It could also continue lower as a triple zigzag. And if this invalidation point next week is broke or the week after is breached, then that is how I would start to label cycle wave four as a triple zigzag. If it's over here and cycle 5 has begun, then it's possible that intermediate wave 1 was over at this high, but this just doesn't really look very good at all. It doesn't look normal as a 5 wave impulse for gold's impulses. It will subdivide at lower time frames as a 5 wave impulse, but when we get to the daily chart level, it just doesn't have a normal look. And so that reduces the probability of this wave count. Do consider it's possible cycle 4 could continue lower. If it's over, here's intermediate 1. Intermediate 2 may have ended very close to the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio of intermediate 1. If your own analysis for gold is immediately very bullish, then this may be the wave count you would choose to use as a pathway forward. You would may be expecting a third wave to begin at this week's lows. Here's intermediate wave 2 as a zigzag. This actually looks pretty good as a zigzag. A, B, C. I've drawn a best fit channel around it to contain all of this movement to be quite conservative for the upper edge. If we see the upper edge breached by clear upward movement with strong upward movement, then it's possible intermediate 2 could be over. But also remember the first wave count expects a wee bounce before a resumption of downward movement for a second wave correction and so a breach of this channel is not conclusive confirmation of the second wave count because the first wave count could also see some upward movement to start next week.
For now, let's use this target. Intermediate 3 would reach 1.618, the length of intermediate 1 at 2141. That's a mid-term target for gold for the bullish scenario. At the last all-time high for gold, the upward trend reached very extreme. RSI reached deeply overbought and then exhibited double bearish divergence at that high. When those extreme conditions occur and we get strong bearish candlestick patterns, we have to consider the possibility of a trend change, either to down or sideways. This downward movement has now been enough to pull ADX down from very extreme and pull RSI right back into neutral territory. There is again room for an upward trend to develop. We do also have to consider the possibility that this was a big trend change though, and so we have to be open-minded and objective and consider both scenarios, and price will eventually tell us which of those two scenarios is correct. In Elliott Wave terms, if our bullish wave count is invalid, then we are left only with our bearish wave count. For now, they both remain valid. This week, more bearishness again from gold. We've got some strong downward days and weeks in this downward movement and some relatively weaker upward movement. This week, we have a strong bearish candlestick pattern with a long upper wick which is bearish. It has a strong push from volume, pushing price lower. On balance volume this week doesn't give us a signal. ADX is still declining. The DX lines are still whipsawing. The ADX line is still not below both DX lines. So if an upward trend does again develop, it would still be extreme. It hasn't been brought right down below those DX lines yet for a new upward trend to develop which is more sustainable. We've been over RSI, ATR is overall flat as price is moving lower, that's okay, sometimes that happens, or actually often that happens in the early stages of a new trend for gold, it will also happen in a counter trend movement, so it's not going to tell us which of those two scenarios is most likely, this particular indicator won't. Uh, stochastics is neutral, MACD fully bearish. At the daily chart level, there's a couple of really strong downward days this week, and they have really good strong push from volume. It happened back here, strong downward movement. Here's the all-time high for gold, and this one of the keys to identifying, is this a counter-trend movement, or is it a start of a new trend, is to look at the beginning of that. Beginning new trends often start with a lot of strength and then you see some hesitancy as we see those counter trend movements. And this downward day here, particularly early on in this first little fall in price, or rather large fall in price actually, has really strong push from volume and huge range on this candlestick. We're not seeing a similar volume and range in upward movement and now again we've got strong downward movement. I said last week, and I think the week before as well, that this swing high was really important because from this all-time high for gold, we have a series of lower lows and lower highs, the basic definition of a downward trend. And so we do need to be open-minded and consider that this is possible, it's a new downward trend, until that swing high is taken out. And it wasn't taken out this week. This high is slightly below this, that's really important. We still have a series of lower highs and lower lows. Now it is also possible that this is a counter trend movement that could have been over down here and we could be on our way up to new all time highs for gold. If this swing high is taken out then that view should be dominant. That hasn't happened this week. We have a bearish candlestick pattern at this high and strong downward movement with strong push from volume. No signal from on balance volume at the daily chart level this week. RSI just reached into overbought at that high. It's well into neutral territory already. ADX is giving us the strongest signal it can give. It is rising from low levels, coming up from below both DX lines, telling us there is a new downward trend because the negative DX line is above the positive. ATR is also showing some increase. There is strength in volume and hugely increased range in this big downward day. Stochastics is neutral and MACD gives us a bearish crossover to support the first Elliott wave count. 
There's a lot of bullishness out there for gold at the moment, but I want to try and step back, be objective and look at all the data. We have to consider both possibilities. There's actually quite a lot of evidence for a bearish scenario for gold. If we see a new swing low in the next week or so, then that bearish case is going to increase, increase in probability. But if price turns around and makes a new swing high, then the bullish scenario would increase in probability. That's all from me this week with your gold analysis. I hope all of our members are having a fabulous week.